veterans. The critics, though, were another matter. His technique and use of paint in his late works were likened to custard, coal dust, cream, and perhaps most infamously, to soap suds and whitewash, a comment made about one of Turner's radical late oil paintings exhibited in 1842. Aside from being one of Turner's more iconic and outlandish works, it also has the longest title in the history of art. It's called Snowstorm, Steamboat Off a Harbour's Mouth, Making Signals in Shallow Water and Going by the Lead. The author was in the storm on the night the Ariel left Harwich. Now, what we get from that is that Turner himself is claiming to have been lashed to the mast on this boat in this particular snowstorm. And in fact, he claimed that to have happened, but art historians have searched high and low, and no one can find any record of a boat called the Ariel leaving Harwich, and it's led some people to assume that Turner is making this up. But there is also the added fact that he's 67 at the time, and the idea of a man of that age strapping himself to a mast, exposing himself to the elements for hours, is perhaps a tad far-fetched. Nonetheless, it shows us what Turner's real aim is in this kind of painting and in a lot of his disaster paintings, which is to give a view from outside, but also to try and convey an experience from inside. The steamboat itself is a relatively new invention. It's invented at the beginning of the 19th century, but Turner obliterates technology in progress confronted by the forces of nature. And he grabs everything and anything, from his brushes, using both ends, to his palette knives, and uses his fingers, too, to drag the paint across in a sculptural way. And what we're left with, I think, is a feeling that a career has come full circle. We're back where we started with that idea of disaster, shipwreck, and the sublime. <laughs>